Hello, Young Adult Artists. Welcome to the Mandala Elephant um, Painting Class. Thank you so much for ordering the kit. Um, in front of you, you should have a blank canvas. You might be able to see kind of a little bit of a shark on mine. I'm recycling one of my canvases. But a blank canvas, um, a larger brush, and a smaller brush, a paper towel or a Kleenex. Also, you should have teal, black, white, kind of like a limey green, and an uh, ocean breeze, which is a lighter blue. I'll just call it that lighter blue for today. Um, be sure you have a cup of water and a paper plate, just in case you need to mix um, any of your colors. So again, blank canvas, your two brushes, Kleenex, teal, black, white, ocean breeze, uh, excuse me, uh, lime green, and that light blue, which is also known as ocean breeze. Um, cup of water, paper plate, all that good materials, and we are ready to go. Uh, go ahead and wash your two brushes first. Just kind of put them in your cup of water, swirl them around, get them nice and clean. And then next you will be drying your brushes. Perfect. All right. So step one is big brush, black paint. And I want to completely cover my canvas, including the four sides in black. So big brush, just going to paint side to side nicely covering up your whole canvas in black. Be sure there's no bumps in there and there's no white peeking through you in a solid black canvas. We're pretty much starting with the background and building our elephant um, on top. This is one of my favorite paintings at the studio. I just kind of go all the way from left to right slowly but surely covering up all that canvas space. And if you want, you can always give your black a second coat if you feel like the first time around you didn't get into all those spots you wanted. Um, you still see a lot of white peeking through. You can paint it all black once, let it dry, and then go back and kind of touch it up with a second coat or just kind of go into those spots that you accidentally missed the first time. Again, be sure your paint looks nice and smooth. You don't want any bumps on there. You can always wipe off the extra on your paper uh, paper towel or paper plate. The bumps on there is just gonna take it for uh, take forever to dry. So you want to make sure everything in the background, all the black, is nice and dry before you build anything on top. And if it's shiny, it means it's still wet. So be careful of any wet spots later on when we're building our elephant on top. And then I can start working on the sides as that's kind of drying. I always paint the sides just because it looks better when you hang it on the wall. As I'm painting the sides, the, the front of the canvas is drying.
check. If I was not videotaping this right now, I would probably push paw, I would probably give it a second coat, um, which means I would go over it a second time. So I'm gonna move on here in just a moment, but if you feel like you are not done with your black background, um, you are welcome to pause me, give your um, uh, canvas a second coat of black com uh, completely, wait for it to dry, and then come back to um, the next part of our video. So you're welcome to pause and come back to um, the next step once you're ready, if you're not done with the black background. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. It's just still a little bit shining, so probably give it just a, another moment to dry while I'm washing and drying my brush. Be sure it's not too shiny on there because you wanna start building on top. Perfect. All right. The next thing I'm gonna kind of concentrate on is making all those um, shapes of the different pieces of the elephant. So the eye, which is kind of like a paisley shape where it's pointy on top and rounded on, uh, excuse me, pointy on the bottom and rounded on the top. You have your ear that kind of comes off of the canvas, the forehead area, the trunk, the leg, and the tusk that kind of uh, finishes off into a J shape. I am gonna use my small brush and my white paint to kind of just draw out those little sections. And then I can go in and just kind of paint them with those nice, beautiful colors and kind of go back to white and gray and um, and design some um, beautiful um, dots and shapes on top. Uh, so I am going to grab my small brush and my white paint. Small brush, white paint. I am going to come out a little bit from the top right corner, almost halfway, almost halfway, and come down just a little bit. And look at about right here on my canvas, about this point, and make a dot. I'm gonna come up and make that paisley shape. As you can see, my black is still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna work in with some grays here. So there is that paisley shape where it's pointy on the bottom. It looks like a comma shape as well. So there we go, there is the eye. You can look at the distance from the right corner. I come down a little bit. It, the center of my canvas is right here. So maybe the point, kind of have that center. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on like where the forehead is. So I have my nice eye shape. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna be building so many colors on top of this. I just wanna get the basic placement of everything down. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building on the forehead. I'm gonna start on the left side and just kind of come up and over where the forehead kind of curves. As you can see, I do this a lot where I make dashes and then I connect them just to kind of slow down my hand. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna work on the top of kind of where the um, tusk kind of breaks off. So in the middle, right, of where the eye shape is, I'm gonna kind of make a rainbow curve. And I'm doing dashes. I notice myself going back that a lot. So I can slow down my hand and I can connect it. And then past the point of the eye, for a little bit more white. So here's the point of the eye. I'm gonna come down just a little bit, almost like a slide Oop, to the right. And then I'm gonna kind of come into this curve where the tusk is gonna break off a little bit later. It's almost like a slanted L shape. So you have your rainbow shape up here, the right middle of the eye. I'm gonna slide down and then kind of curve in like so. See that L shape right there? Perfect, perfect. Once I've made that, maybe come in just a little bit more. And let's see, I'm gonna line this up with the end of the tusk. So this is gonna go ahead and line up with the end of that L shape. So line this line up with this one here. And then I'm gonna come down where the trunk is, but whenever I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna make kind of a little bit of a curve, which is kind of like the left curve of my trunk. And I'm gonna come in a little bit too. 
Again, this does not have to be perfect the first time. Just be sure you're slowly kind of coming in. Not that much space from the bottom. It's a little bit of a curve. You don't have to have as many curves as I do on my trunk. Just be sure you have that curve right there. Perfect. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to start go ahead and start on that J-shaped tusk. And it's the tusk is slanted, so I want to come in a little bit from the point, that L shape right there. I'm going to look at that point, come in a little bit, and make my J shape. Going up to my J, and then back down. And I'm going to meet up at the very end of that L. So kind of come in a little bit from the point right there and then meet up with the very end of that L. Then you should have a nice J shape, like so. Next, I'm gonna work on that large ear, that large ear. So here's the forehead area, that line to the left that we made. I'm gonna come down a little bit. So I'm gonna come down a little bit and then I'm gonna come up almost to the very top of my canvas and slowly come down and you'll see this triangle shape up here so kind of come down and then I'm going to connect those dashes now that I've kind of figured it out a little bit more so up almost to the very top come down and you'll see that triangle shape right there <clears throat> for that bottom line I'm going to start at the point of the bottom of my eye, really swoop down, almost touching the tip of that J shape you made earlier. So the tip of that J shape, and then come up to a nice curve, a nice little curve right there. And then you're not gonna touch the top part of the ear, but you're gonna get pretty darn close. And then you can go in and connect those dashes. And those dashes help me kind of slow down my hand, kind of figure out a little bit more the direction I'm going. And last but not least, you want that leg in there. And the leg is kind of peeking through a little bit um, right here where the ear um, and the tusk kind of are. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of a line right here. And I'm gonna come in just a little bit too as I'm kind of like how we came in a little bit with our, our trunk. I'm gonna just kind of bring it in a little bit more and more the leg and again if you are not at this point with your um with your painting go ahead and uh, pause the tape you can go back to different sections if you missed it um but again we started off with our paisley shape eyes i'm going to touch up everything as i review go back to more white we did our forehead shape we did that rainbow shape a little bit of a curve. We did our L, which kind of started, um, excuse me, at the end of our paisley shape and came down. We did the trunk, a little bit of a curve. Brush is getting dry. Remember that kind of came in towards the corner a little bit. It wasn't perfectly straight. Then we did our J shape. We did our ear, so we started down a little bit from the forehead, came almost all the way up and then down. Left that triangle shape. We started at the end of that paisley shape. And then we did the leg where we kind of came in a little bit from the ear and we we're working towards the right a little bit too, a little bit of a slanted line. You have your basic shape. You can go in there and kind of smooth out any bumps and make sure it looks nice, a little bit cleaner. You can go back and add more uh, white. The white will uh, probably be a little bit brighter now that the black's probably a little bit more 
uh, dry too. So you have your nice elephant shape, gorgeous. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And once I am done with washing and drying my brush, I'm gonna go from um, teal to ocean breeze to uh, lime green for my colors. And all I'm doing is kind of like the same thing over and over again, following the shapes of each section and just sweeping those colors in there. Um, and again, they don't have to be exactly like mine. You can I just go in there and make sure um, you filled in each spot nicely. And there's still some black peeking through in each one of those sections as well. And the task will be white with a little bit of gray shadowing um, in there. Um, so we're not gonna worry about putting teal or um, uh, that light blue ocean breeze and that limey green. Uh, but I'm gonna stick with my small brush. I'm gonna go in there and kind of start in this kind of fun rainbowy shape. And I'm just kind of sweeping my colors in there. They're not too solid. I'm just kind of flicking the end of my brush, mostly working on the bottom and top part of the ear. Perfect. And then I'm just going to jump to the next section, uh, which is inside of the eye area. And it looks like I'm just kind of working with this curve. And then I'm working down here with some sweeps. This is all the teal color and my small brush. So curves, kind of working with that one, that one. Looks like there's a rainbow curve up here. And I'm just kind of flicking some teal down here. And then up here in the forehead area, I am kind of dipping down a little bit on the bottom half my teal and it's okay if it touches the white you're gonna have a lot of blending colors where they're really working together so what colors that are working together so it's okay if you're jumping from one color to the next and then I'm gonna kind of follow the trunk shape I'm gonna do more of a rainbow curve so up here it's more of a U shape down here it's more of a rainbow curve you can even kind of work with this L shape a little bit too of sweeps where I'm flicking at the end of my brush and then down here I'm just kind of doing more of that U shape I do want to just kind of go over these just a little bit so they're not, not so bright kind of following that curve that I was before and if you like more teal add more teal if you like more of that light ocean breeze blue add more of that you can kind of go back and forth too so don't feel like it has to be perfect the first time around. And then in the legs, it's kind of like the same as the trunk where I'm just kind of dipping just a little bit, maybe even a little bit less with my brush. I'm gonna break up some of this white too so you don't see it as much. Perfect. Once I'm done with adding as much teal as I want, again, just kind of follow those lines. I'm gonna do the same thing with my lighter blue, that ocean breeze blue. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna dip into that lighter blue with my small brush. I'm gonna follow that same idea with more sweeps. You can always add more if you want. And add some here. So I'm just gonna flicking with my small brush. Again, kind of like that rainbow curve. Come up a little bit higher if you want to on top. Break up some of that line work. Following that rainbow shape. Following this S and the L. Excuse me, this L shape right here. I'm going to also kind of go into the trunk again. A little bit of a U curve. Go over this white a little bit to break it up. If you want a little bit more coverage on the white, you can go back and add more, but you can have as much white peeking through as you want. Oh, I forgot this little area too. I can go back and add some ocean breeze in this little area right there. And then again, following. Same little line work. 
covering up some of the white, like so. So far, so good. Ooh, maybe add a little bit more inside the eye area. You can go back and kind of add more and less as you feel. They're all kind of blending together anyways, especially as two kind of tealish light blues. They look really pretty together. Once I'm done, I went from teal to this light blue ocean breeze. Now I'm gonna go to this really pretty limey green following that same kind of those same curves, the same way that I kind of worked those other ones. Okay, and again, they're okay if they touch. Down here. That's okay. Oops, sorry, I'm looking at my screen as I'm painting this of how the elephant looks like. And again, I'm following these little areas. Can kind of go into the black area a little bit more, if you please go over the white lines a little bit more, that rainbow curve a little bit more. Okay. More over here, please. curves again it's okay if there's still some black peeking through you definitely want to not cover the whole thing you're just kind of going in there and sweeping these colors in here it's the point isn't to get rid of all the black you still definitely want some of that black to be peeking through gorgeous Awesome. So before these jar, I do want to go in there and add some gray and some white just as fillers and you can add as much as you want. But once you're done with your colors, adding as much as you want, um, you can always go back and like outline it more if you want to kind of get cleaner lines. But um, one thing that we did with the original is go in there with uh, grays and whites to kind of fill up the space a little bit more but if you like it how it is don't feel like you have to but I'm gonna kind of go with the original so uh, to make gray I'm gonna make um, scoot this back just a little bit I'm gonna uh, use my small brush and get a nice scoop of white maybe a couple since I have a pretty small brush too let's do three scoops of white and maybe a dot of black and make yourself a nice gray so I did three scoops of white and a dot of black I always kind of like to wipe the side of my brush after I'm done mixing because I always feel like I get big chunks of paint on top. Um, but again, same as before, like we did with our colors, you can go in there and just kind of find some areas to kind of fill in with gray, following the same kind of pattern or, or, or movement with your brush. If you like it just colorful and don't want to add any gray, that is absolutely up to you, but it's just kind of going in there and Kind of filling up the space, maybe just a tad darker. Just kind of adding some gray in there. If you are wanting to smooth out your paint a little bit more, you can always add a little bit of water, tap it on your paper towel, and just kind of go over your gray. But just be sure you are still sweeping. So if you feel like your gray is having a hard time moving, add a little bit of water to your small brush, tap it on your paper towel, and go over your gray to kind of help it smooth out a little bit more and kind of get a little bit softer. Kind of going in there and filling up some of the black areas and 
covering them up just a little bit more. You could go back with your colors and use your colors as a way to fill it up a little bit more too. While I'm working with gray, um, what I think I'm gonna do is wash and dry my small brush once I was done with my gray. I'm gonna go back to the gray mix that I just made before it dries, and I'm gonna paint the bottom half of my tusk gray with my small brush. So since I'm already kind of working with gray and before my gray mix dries, I'm gonna paint the bottom half of my tusk gray, so that bottom part gray. You can go over your line work a little bit too. And before that gray dries, I'm gonna take my brush, um, I didn't even wash it, I'm gonna dip it into the white, and I'm gonna paint the top half with white. And I'm gonna kind of go over that gray just a little bit so they kind of work together, kind of a blending area when that white and that gray work together. Just kind of paint it with my brush going back and forth like the shape of that J. So bottom part gray, top part white, then in the middle they're kind of working together. I'll take my brush, get a little bit of water onto it, just kind of smooth out that gray a little bit. Um, I still feel like my gray is a little bit too dark and my white is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to give it a moment to dry and I'll go back and kind of um, touch it up with a little bit more white so it gets a little bit brighter later on. But I think adding water and just kind of going over it to smooth it out definitely helped that lighter gray now and that darker gray work together a little bit more because water is a good way to move, smooth, and blend your colors. I always kind of say that. And if the outside line get a little bit too rough, just kind of go out and outline it with that gray that's already down there. Oh, excuse me. So again, I'm going to go in there a little bit later on and just kind of clean it up by adding more white on top because I feel like that got a little bit too gray. All right. Um, so speaking of making things lighter, I am going to wash and dry my brush. And I am going to go into white. And I'm going to add some sweeps of white in there. Not, not too much because we are going to be putting those mandala shapes on there. But um, let's see, just a little bit of white. Maybe even wipe some off on your paper towel so it's not too bright. Just gonna put some sweeps here and there of white. Again, following the shape of all the other lines I kind of made before. You don't want it to be too much because you want your white mandala shapes to um, kind of show a little bit better on top. At this point, um, once you're done with the white, if you want to go back and add anything on top, you're welcome to kind of go back and add any of those colors. If you wanted to add more gray, you can too. But now that this tusk area is a little bit more dry, I am gonna go back and just add white on top of it to lighten it up. Oh, maybe even more time. I feel like it might not have been dry enough. I was not patient. I could even work on my mandalas for a while before I go back and touch this area up. So I might need a little bit of extra time to dry. But I definitely want my tusk to be a little bit brighter. Smoothing out just a and jump into my bigger brush to kind of smooth it out a little bit easier. A little bit too bumpy. I was not patient. I'll let this dry for a little bit more. I'll 
with that dry as I work on my mandala. So with the mandala, I am gonna kind of show you each little section. Um, and I probably won't do as many, but I'm gonna show you how to do all the shapes. Uh, for the top part of the ear, you have a bunch of like diamond shapes and we're just using our small brush, small brush and white paint for these shapes. For the top part, um, probably give your painting a couple minutes to dry. As you can see, I'm not patient, but you do have to be patient with it sometimes in order for, for you to be able to build on top versus going into there and then just kind of mixing with your the colors of your elephant. Um, so give it a couple minutes to dry, but I'm gonna show you the shapes that are kind of working along each one. And then once you're ready, you can go in there. Um, the top part of the ear has diamond shapes um, and it looks like it's getting from larger to smaller. So you can go in there and build your diamond shapes first. Like so, and just kind of make them smaller and smaller as you're kind of working all the way through. Ooh, I'm gonna start my computer again. Okay. So you're just kind of building those mandala shapes and it's like just diamonds that are getting smaller and smaller as you're kind of working your way to the edge. And then you can go in there and paint inside of each one of them with white paint. Again, be sure to give your painting some time to dry before you go in there and paint. So all these will be colored inside. Um, and then once you're done making your diamond shapes and painting inside of them, um, you can use the back of your small brush, dip into the white paint, and it looks like there are three dots on the right side of each diamond, top right, and the left side of each diamond. And again, I'm just using the back of my small brush, using it like a stamp to make those dots. So diamonds from large to small, fill them in and then use the back for um, the dots on the right side and the left side. And they're all kind of on the, the top part, not the bottom. Um, there's a bunch of beautiful dots down here. And they look like for the most part, they're about the same size. But if you want to go from large to small, you can just push um, on the back of your small brush again. Can push a little bit harder and get a little bit softer and softer as you're if you're wanting to get that look of large to small if you want to keep them the same which it looks like ours is for the most part about the same just kind of push on the back of your small brush about um, the same kind of strength all the way from this end to that end of um, your brush uh, keeping in with uh, inside the ear shape. It does look like you have two swirly shape S's. Um, I'm gonna dip my brush in my cup of water and dry it up and then go in there with more white. And I'm gonna make that first swirly kind of S shape, kind of towards S. Kind of working on this top part and then make the swirly shape and then come back down and then make the swirly S shape. And remember, the harder you push on your brush, the thicker the line becomes. So if you want really thin lines, just be on the tip of your brush. And it looks like another, like, kind of like a fallen backwards S. And at any point, if you want to pause this video so you can work on it a little bit more, go for it. Perfect. And this one looks like a little bit longer. It looks like a little bit longer S. Perfect. And then you can use the back of your small brush. It looks like you have some dots up here on this one. It almost has like a triangle shape to it where it gets thinner and thinner as you're going to the top. Um, they're, they're about the same kind of size. So I might want to go back and push down a little bit harder. Then this one has some dots, oops, might be too much, kind of working on the outside. And again, if you feel like you want your white to be brighter, you can always go over it another, the second coat and kind of brighten it up. All right, um, next section, let's work on the trunk a little bit. So with the trunk, I am gonna make one, two, three, four, five circles. Um, so I'm gonna make, um, a little bit close to the top, maybe just a little bit further down, make once, like, excuse me, just half of a circle. So one, you can truly just see half of it. Two, so just almost like a C shape. And then it looks like they're getting smaller and smaller 
three, four, and five. This one looks like it's all filled in, the half of that circle. This one looks like it's all filled in too. This one looks like it's all filled in as well. So those are all filled in like semicircles. Then this way you can kind of just see a C shape, so half of the circle shape. So truly you're just seeing half of the circle. And then again, more of a C shape. So C, C, and then these are painted inside and you're going from large to small. Let's see, I'll have white on my brush. I'm gonna add a lot of more white to do it here. All right, um, the next section, let's do the eyes, the eyes. Um, the circle part is a little bit higher up, up here where um, we had close to our our, um, our rainbow shape. I'm going to just make a white rainbow shape up here. And then I'm going to use the back of my small brush and just make dots kind of going above that. And you can add more if you want. And then I'm going to go in there and make a circle where the eye would be. So a little bit further up. Just stomach scrolling. And then I'm going to make some diamond shapes. So I'm going to make four of them. One. And they're just, the tips of them are touching the, the circle. Two. Three. And then four diamond shapes. Again, the tips of them are touching the circle. And then it looks like there's another diamond shape within diamond shape. So I'm going to come down a little bit. And come back up make a little bit of a point come down a little bit from the middle and then come back up so the top part has another diamond shape come go it's kind of hard to see so from the middle i'm going to come down a little bit almost like a v and then fill in that top diamond shape to where you can just see that v underneath it so it's a little bit unclear with that and then uh, more dots thank goodness the back of my small brush and then it looks like um, there is like kind of like a V shape in here. Boop, 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 boop. Between each diamond shape, there is dots in a formation of a V. Like so. Looks like there's some dots in the middle of the circle as well. And it looks like some dots. If you wanted to add some dots, the points of the bigger triangles on the outside, you can as well. Like so. All right. So far, so good. And again, you can always go back and touch things up. I'm so tempted to go back to mess with this, but I'm going to give it some time to dry. Um, next thing I'm going to do is kind of work on this upper um, area of the trunk. Um, let's see, kind of underneath this rainbow area, I'm going to start making a circle, or half a of a circle, sorry, I keep on saying a circle, but it's half of a circle kind of coming out this far. Ooh. Maybe push a little bit less on your brush. I think I got a little bit too big. And then it looks like we have a bunch of kind of diamond shapes, excuse me, like triangle shapes, kind of almost like a sun. And then it looks like we have some curves above that. So just kind of like that rainbow curve over and over. Kind of working outside that sun shape. And it looks like we have even more kind of rainbowy curves working between each one. So how that one dips down, I want to go above it and make kind of like a curve. Let's see if we can do this. Another little curve right there. And then let's see, I have two curves. And then it looks like I have a diamond shape sitting on top of each curve. So on top of each curve, it looks like I have a diamond shape sitting on top of it. Those kind of touch though. Let's see, ours might be a little bit too many to where we have to make diamond shapes all the way across. So let's make a diamond shape make this work on our smaller canvas sitting on top of each rainbow shape is a diamond shape all right 
So you have your sun, you have your rainbow curves going all the way around, and then you have your diamond shapes. And then let's do this. Let's, since we have a smaller canvas, let's build more diamond shapes between these two. So that one will go a little bit lower, kind of touch those points. So we go in there. And then, sorry, my belly is growling. So I'm going to make a diamond shape between each one and have it just kind of dip down. There we go. That looks so cute. There we go. So for the most part, those are those shapes. Um, and it looks like I'm going in there with more dots. The circle doesn't have any dots. The, uh, the kind of the ray area, if you wanted to put some dots at the end of the points, you can put some dots at the end of those points. And then not that first rainbow shape, but that second rainbow shape um, underneath them. Um, it looks like there's dots in there. So that first rainbow area, we're just kind of leaving it alone. That second rainbow area underneath it, we're making those dots underneath the curves like so. All right. And then we have that. So for... Our next thing, what we're going to do is we are going to split those diamonds in half. So we made the dots and then for that next section, I'm going to go above our curves and split those diamonds in half with white. Ooh, I think I dipped into the green accidentally. So every other one split in half. every other one I'm going to split in half like so and then I can go in them and make some dots I can make some dots in it if you can still see the diamond shape mine kind of a little bit messy you can make some dots in the half of each of those ones oh did I miss one right there all right I doubled up on my diamonds I'm gonna go in there and work with it so after you split every other diamond in half then you can put a dot the left side and the right side of each split. Then you can go in there above those diamonds that are split in half, put a dot on top of those. I kind of messed up one of my splits, but I'm working with it. So I split my diamonds in half, put a dot on the left side and the right side, and then put a dot above those ones. And then if you want, you can make even more dots Kind of working on that trail just kind of working above your diamonds mm. kind of going up and down up and down so i'm dipping down and i'm dipping up i'm dipping down i'm dipping up i'm just kind of working on the outside shape of those diamonds going down oops sorry i'm kind of a harsher hand but I'm just kind of moving up and down on the outer areas of those diamonds just kind of up and down with my dots like so all right the next thing I'm going to do is this nice beautiful swirl on top which looks like a limited space but I'm going to go for it I'm going to come up a little bit higher than my dots I'm going to dip down a little bit lower and then I'm going to make a swirl going up I'm gonna make a swirl going down, almost like making an E shape right here, if you can see that E shape. Go in there and connect those lines. And then I'm gonna make kind of like the letter six, excuse me, the number six down here. So I started up kind of like a rainbow shape, dip down, kind of came into an E shape, and then came down again and made a six. But they're not, the ends are not touching. And again, if you want, you can do another coat to make that white brighter. And if you want to make some dots, push a little bit harder, a little bit less and less. Looks like it's going from big to small. And then same with this one. It started with big and it's getting smaller, smaller and smaller. I'm just kind of following those outside edges of your elephant shape. Mine got a little bit close to my eye, but that's okay. All 
All right, next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna work on kind of like the, the forehead area. I'm gonna come down a little bit from the corner and just kind of dip down just a little bit with my white. And it looks like it's just kind of like, um, almost just like the M shape, W shape, as many sh layers as you can fit above your line. So just kind of zigzaggy up and down, up and down. Do a little bit of space up and down, up and down. And then it looks like underneath it, it is um, kind of a triangle shape. So just kind of dip down, give it a little bit of space between each one. And make a triangle shape between each one. A little bit of space between each one. And then um, over them, you're going to kind of make a little swoop, almost like a leaf shape or like a dome shape come to a point like so that's so pretty and then between each one where it kind of dips in you're gonna make a dot boop boop gorgeous all right i think what i'm gonna do is kind of separate this area a little bit more by is not my favorite all right next thing I'm gonna do is there's these diamond shapes um, kind of underneath the forehead and I don't think I can fit as many on my smaller canvas as we do have the original but I do want to fit in like at least um, a couple more so I'm gonna do one diamond shape right here two diamond shapes right here diamond shapes right here kind of on the left side and then I'm gonna go down and from the middle go down a little bit middle go down make that letter V kind of like how we did earlier perfect and then it looks like underneath that diamond shape it's kind of like a V and dots boop, boop, there and then you're gonna do the V the right side of the V the back of my brush again Anytime I'm making dots, I'm using the back of my brush because it has that perfect little circle. Maybe like three dots on each side, three on the left side and three on the right side on the bottom. And again, if you wanted to add more, you can kind of continue it on, but just be sure you have space. The original is on a bigger canvas. So if you feel like you can't fit it in, no problem, no problem. Um, what I'm gonna do next is work on my um, task a little bit more. Now that's a little bit more dry, I've been a little bit more patient with it. So I'm just going to go back and add more white to the top part. And add a little bit of water to my brush too, but to kind of make it blend in a little bit better. So white and a little bit of water, tap it on your paper towel, and go over it to kind of smooth it out. tiny bit of black, go back to my gray mix, maybe make some more. Kind of work in some gray underneath here. Because that gray is dry, but I still need it to kind of work with my white a little bit. And then I can go a little bit further down. So I just made a little bit more of a light gray mix. And then added some to the white and just kind of work my way down much better. All right, like so, perfect. And again, I would go back in there and just kind of touch things up, get some of my whites a little bit brighter. Maybe this right here. If you wanna go back and touch anything up, you can. This canvas is smaller than the one we um, originally used for that elephant painting. So if you feel like you can't fit all of this in, no problem, fit as much as you can, just make it look uh, Nice and clean. Be sure to go back and kind of fill in all those little areas we talked about earlier. Make sure your dots look nice and clean. If you want to go back and add some more white, once you're done with the mandalas, to brighten it up, you can as well. 
but voila there is your beautiful um mandala elephant or your henna elephant painting hope you had a good time this is kind of a harder one so don't feel bad if you have to go back and pause it and go back and forth and brighten up some of your whites a little bit later on thank you so much artists have a beautiful day